Today is just a quick video to talk about the new DJI SDR transmission. Now, whilst I don't usually cover this product on the channel, it is something I'm very interested in. It's all part of the DJI Occuting system. That is a system I've done a huge amount of technical deep dives into. And I thought I'd just explain a little bit about the difference between DJI SDR transmission and the original DJI transmission system, because there seems to be quite a bit of confusion out there. Now, the first thing to understand is DJI transmission is a pro product designed to be used along alongside products such as the DJI Ronin 4D, the Inspire 2 series, Master Wheel, and all of DJI's Pro products. And DJI SDR transmission is really a standalone transmission system designed to work with itself. It is a cutback, cheaper, lower spec alternative that exists within its own world. It is not compatible with the larger Pro DJI ecosystem. Whilst you can use it with any camera input and you can actually use it with DJI's Ronin gimbals, it isn't designed to be used within the DJI transmission ecosystem. And I'll explain that a little bit more in a minute. Now, the first thing I just want to touch on is the naming because DJI have called this DJI SDR transmission, but don't be fooled. There is nothing particularly new here. All DJI OcuSync or O products are an SDR or a software defined radio. DJI's original wireless systems light bridge was not an SDR, but DJI 02, 03, and original OcuSync has always been an SDR. Since DJI 02, they've all been based on the P1 chipset. Pretty much all of DJI's OcuSync products are based on their P1 chipset. That includes this, the DJI SDR transmission, the DJI original transmission, DJI 03, DJI Mavic series. They have their own IP, their own ASIC that they use in all of their products. And this one is no different to what they were using before. Really, the differences between DJI SDR transmission and DJI transmission is the additional processing power alongside the main RF chipset rather than the actual RF chipset itself. And whilst it has this new SDR naming, that really is just marketing. In the end, it is the same old OcuSync system that it has always been. DJI label it officially 03 Pro. What DJI are also not using here as a matter of interest is their new S2 chipset, which is used in their O4 products. Up until today, we have still only seen that in the DJI Avata 2, the A3, as well as their other Mini 4 Pro. We haven't seen that turn up in any of the products yet, and I was actually expecting DJI maybe to start pushing that in this year. However, that isn't the case. And in the end, it is just a cutback version of the original DJI transmission system system with a few less features. Now, when it comes to differences between these systems, there is a difference in compatibility, but also technical differences under the hood as well. For instance, DJI Transmission lives in DJI's Pro World. It is designed to be compatible with DJI Master Wheels, the Ronin 4D, and all of those products. The new DJI SDR Transmission is a standalone product. Think of it a bit like the DJI Microphone. It isn't designed to work with other parts of the DJI system. It is literally a standalone product. And whilst you can bolt on and take off additional receivers, within the DJI transmission system ecosystem, you can't cross use them. So for instance, you cannot use a DJI transmission transmitter with a DJI SDR transmission receiver. The two are entirely separate. When it comes to the technical differences under the hood, there's quite a lot going on as well. For instance, both of these transmission systems use DJI 03 Pro, but they do have different capabilities. DJI Transmission supports up to 40 megahertz carrier, 40 megabits a second, and DJI SDR Transmission only supports up to 20 megahertz or 20 megabits per second. When it comes to RF power output, there are some changes as well. DJI Transmission supports up to 33 dBm, whereas DJI SDR SDR transmission only supports up to 30. That is the difference between 1.6 watts and 1 watt of RF output, but it is worth taking into account that those numbers are EIRP, which means it does include antenna gain in the calculation. Moving down, you then have differences in I.O. And whilst they both support the same input resolutions in frame rates, there is less I.O. on the DJI SDR transmission. So, for instance, the DJI transmission transmitter supports SDI in and pass through. So it has an SDI in and out as well as HDMI, whereas the SDR transmitter only has SDI in or HDMI in. There's no pass through option. On the receiving side, it is the same. The DJI transmission system has HDMI and dual SDI outputs, whereas the DJI SDR system only has one HDMI and one SDI output. 
Power-wise, things are different as well. So for instance, DJI Transmission can be powered from PTAP as well as compatible battery options. There are multiple different battery bay options available for DJI Transmission, whereas the DJI SDR system only supports USB-C power or battery power via a compatible battery on the back. The nice thing about the battery is that it does support NPF as standard, which means you don't need to buy an adapter, but it isn't compatible with the DJI batteries like SDR was. Transmission capability wise, they do support the same modes in the sense they both support control mode, which gives you the best functionality in system support. That gives you the best resolution, the lowest latency, and that offers a limited number of receivers and transmitters. But they both also support the broadcast mode as well, which basically allows unlimited receivers with a single transmitter. The only thing to understand though, is that they are not cross compatible. So you cannot use a DJI transmission transmitter with a DJI SDR receiver you cannot use a DJI transmission receiver with a DJI SDR transmitter. They are completely separate and as I've said already, they basically live in their own independent worlds. Whilst the DJI SDR transmission system is cut back in many ways, it does have one feature that the original transmission system does not, and that is Wi-Fi. This allows you to stream directly from the transmission system to your smartphone or tablet and use those devices as a display. Whereas on the original transmission system, the only way to get video output was via a receiver, and you had to do that either via the display or via the independent receiver modules. Now you can use a local smartphone, a local tablet, via via Wi-Fi, or you can connect them up directly to a receiver via the USB port as well, allowing you to stream directly into the DJI app. This is a really nice additional feature. It's something I guess we will see added to the DJI Transmission 2 system when that eventually comes out in the future. But here and now, it is a feature that DJI have added onto the SDR Transmission, and it is a real nice feature, especially in environments where Wi-Fi isn't going to be an issue. In the end, what you have is two separate product lines, DJI Transmission, which is a pro product, and DJI SDR Transmission, which is what I would class as semi-pro, that offers a a standalone video transmission solution for people who don't really need all of the compatibility with the other DJI systems. Now, just to show you this chart that gives you a bit of a simpler overview of the differences, you can see the main areas here laid out side by side. There are a lot of little other differences that you do need to take into account as well. For instance, the antennas are not replaceable on the SDR transmission, but they are on the standard one. You've got no Wi-Fi on the original one, and there is lots of little stuff down the bottom like no metadata transmission, mirror control mode, voice over USB-C, a lot of other stuff that is different between them once you start digging into the detail. The reality is the DJI transmission system is a pro product, the SDR transmission is a semi-pro product, and as a result of that, you're getting reduced functionality. Now, the big question people will have is, can we use this on FPV? And the answer to that is yes. However, it isn't the perfect solution. What it's not going to be is a replacement for an O3E unit with HDMI input. It is much larger, much heavier overall. If you take a look, you can see the transmitters weigh approximately 145 grams and the dimensions are 86.5 by 64 by 32. However, users are already starting to tear these down. One of the amazing guys on my Discord has stripped his down already and he's found that the boards alone in the unit weigh about 53 grams so there is definitely an option here to be able to build a lighter weight solution for use in FPV or drone situations. You could use this alongside the likes of DJI O3 as well although you're going to have to be a little bit careful with the channel allocation. What you would be able to do though is use the likes of O3 for your main low latency FPV camera and then use this for your input for your cine camera if you're flying a larger rig or you want to have an input from the likes of a GoPro. Weight is always going to be the compromise here but there is no reason you can't get this on board and 53 grand certainly isn't terrible when it comes to getting a system like this on board a craft but you're going to have to figure out all the ins and outs of lighter HDMI cables and things like that but I think you could definitely get a full system connected to a camera in the 60-70 grams area. That isn't to say though if you're flying bigger aircraft you need to tear it down there is no reason that you can't get these on board, especially if you're not worried about weight and space.
Now, when it comes to price, DJI have been incredibly aggressive with the price on the DJI SDR transmission. DJI transmission basic kit is about £2,000 in the UK, but the basic kit of DJI SDR transmission in the UK is £519. That is quarter of the cost, basically, of the DJI transmission system. It is an absolute bargain, in my opinion, and I think this is going to be a very, very popular option with many people out there. One last thing I just want to talk about is the differences between the likes of DJI Transmission and the Ace Pro 750 from Teradek, because I actually had someone reach out and ask me, are Teradek lying here? Because DJI say their transmission latency on SDR Transmission is about 80 milliseconds or 70 milliseconds on DJI Transmission. Now, that is higher than we see on the FPV system, but that isn't surprising based on it's a higher quality link. There's always a payoff. You can have ultra low latency, but with less redundancy, or you can have higher resolution, higher latency, but more link redundancy, which means you're going to get better penetration. The difference is, though, the A750 system is saying that it's got less than one millisecond of latency. However, it really depends on how they're doing this. Something is very interesting, though, between these two systems, and that is the fact that it's a very similar difference to what you have on DJI and HD0, because the A750 system from Teradek is using technology based on Amian chipsets, which is basically ProSight HD that we had in the past, which is the same core technology as HD0, which is joint source channel coding. Now, that system offers very low latency transmission, but it comes at the cost generally of lower penetration performance, not necessarily lower range, but less link resilience. I haven't actually tried the Teradex system, but the fundamental basics between what they're using here from Amian and what DJI is using is the fact that DJI is a two-way link that bakes in a high amount of redundancy to ensure that the link is stable, the link is capable of good penetration. Whereas the old Amian system, and I haven't tried the new one that they're using, was very much a one-way link, wasn't two-way. That came at the expense of retransmissions, link redundancy, and stability in difficult RF environments. Now, I haven't tested this, so I would need to try it for myself, and I would love to get one of these on the Spectrum Analyzer to have a look. But the fundamental basics are you have DJI, which is using a two-way transmission system that bakes in a lot of error correction data, and this system, which I suspect is one way, and even if it is two way, the core video transmission system is based on joint source channel coding, which means that they're basically streaming wireless data at low latency. And whilst it will offer lower latency, it doesn't mean it's going to have the same link resilience. There is always a trade off here to be had, and one is not better than the other. It just comes down to different use cases. It is also worth noting that in these specifications from the A750, they talk about earside latency. They're not talking about system latency. So whereas DJI in their specifications for DJI transmission, and if we scroll down here, the video latency of 70 milliseconds. And if we go to the SDR transmission spec, DJI actually spell it out a little bit more. What they actually say under the specification of this is 80 milliseconds, including camera and screen display latency, or 35 milliseconds, excluding camera and screen latency. So that 35 milliseconds would be system latency. I'm not seeing in the spec for this any mention of the system latency. They're saying sub one millisecond. When you go into their data sheet for this product, you can see down here, delay TX to RX, sub 0 0.01 millisecond without format conversion. I think they're talking about basic ear latency, which is basically the speed of light. If you take into account system latency, which will include IO latency on the inputs and outputs. I suspect it is very similar to DJI, but it isn't something I've tested, but it is something I just wanted to talk about because it was highlighted to me. So in the end, DJI transmission, 525 pounds in the UK. It's a bloody bargain, if I'm honest. I have been sent some images for this and I'm gonna be talking about them in the near future if you're interested in seeing it. More than anything, I just put this together to try and put out there some useful information. I hope you have found it useful. If you have, please do consider subscribing to the channel 
channel, don't forget to hit the bell next to it as well. And if you'd like to support the channel, there are links to my Patreon in the description. I want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreons. We would not be able to keep doing this without your support. Anyway, that's it for me. Stay safe. I will speak to you soon.